you just think you've come out through a fight. It's a man, that was, thank God, I've just, you know, I've come out through this. I'm standing strong. God, thank you, Lord. Wake up the next day, and there's another thing that was coming up with. Right? We all face that. Or is it only me? I need you all to pray for me after service. But here's what the word of God says in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 16 and 18. Verse 16 says, for indeed, he, that is the Lord Jesus, does not, he does not give aid or assistance to angels. There's no angelic aid. But he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. That the Lord Jesus does help those. He gives assistance so he strengthens those who are the children of Abraham. And then in verse 18, it says this, for in that, he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to aid those who are tempted. He is able to aid, to assist, to strengthen those who are being tempted. It's all of us. In the middle of our temptations, the Bible says, He is able to aid those who are being tempted. That means you can go to the Lord and say, God, I'm in the middle of this temptation and I need some help. He's able to aid those who are being tempted. Now Paul, uh, the writer of Hebrews continues in chapter 3 and then he goes on to chapter 4. And he comes to this 16th, we come to the 16th verse in Hebrews 4 that you and I are familiar with. The writer says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of of need. Let's come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What was the time of need he's talking about? Well, there are several things he talks about in chapter 3 about working and rest, but he also did mention in chapter 2, verse 18, he's able to help those who are being tempted. So your moments of temptation are your times of need. What must we do? He says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Because you can find mercy and grace to help you in your time of need. Amen? Grace that helps us overcome temptation. There is grace that strengthens us. We talked about this earlier in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. Where Paul, because of the abundance of revelations, he has to stand up against this demonic spirit. Paul says, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. What was a thorn in the flesh? He tells us what it is. A messenger of Satan. So it wasn't cancer. It wasn't a blind eye. It wasn't a short leg. It wasn't a bald head. It was a messenger of... Because you know, that's what you find in all the commentaries. Paul had a blind eye. He had a short hand. He had a broken leg. These, that was his thorn in the flesh. That's not the thorn in the flesh. His thorn in the flesh was a messenger of Satan. He tells us right there. Amen? Now what was this messenger of Satan doing? He said, there was given to me a messenger of Satan to buffet me. This doesn't mean he took him out to lunch every day. It just means he kept coming back over and over again with attacks. It's all about food. Sorry. You know, yesterday when I watched the video about Kenny, I just couldn't, I just burst out laughing. Uh, I remember Kenny's part. This great spiritual father. <laughs> okay. So Paul says, this messenger of Satan, um, he was buffeting me. He was coming back over and over and over again, opposing me in the ministry, causing all kinds of difficulties in the ministry. And so Paul says, concerning this thing, I besought the Lord three times. I prayed three times. God, take this devil away. God, do something with this thing that's coming again and again and again against me. What is, what is God's response? He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Because my strength is made perfect. It's, it comes to the full. It comes to maturity in your weakness. So Paul writes, he says, therefore I gladly, I'd rather boast in my weaknesses because when I am weak, that's when I am really strong. There is grace that strengthens. So I don't know what, what opposition, what kinds of things you are facing that the devil keeps coming up against you over and over and over again. 
But you, like Paul, and you and I, like Paul, can appropriate God's grace, knowing that His grace is sufficient for us in the middle of that thing. When you feel like, God, it's the end of the road. I can't take this anymore. It's so tough, God. His grace is sufficient. Because when you feel absolutely weak, that's when His strength in your life comes to fullness. Amen? So there is grace that strengthens. There is grace that provides. Do you know that provision is a work of God's grace? Provision. Talking about money. Coming into your life. It's a work of God's grace. In 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 8, you know, Paul is talking about money. He's talking about sowing. If you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. And he says, you know, you give as you purpose in your heart. Don't grudge about it. Just give uh, uh, because God loves a cheerful giver. Then he says in verse 8, God is able to make all grace abound to a cheer. And what will this grace do? So that you always having all sufficiency and all things will abound to every good work. I mean, you'll have your, your, your basis will be covered. You'll have provision on every side. What is it? God making all grace abound to a tear. Provision is a work of God's grace. Amen? So you pray, God, I need this grace for provision. Some of us this morning need to pray, God, give me grace to overcome temptation. Some of us might pray, say, need to pray, say, God, give me grace to live a godly life. Some of us may need to pray, say, God, I'm, give me grace to be strong in the middle of this very difficult situation. Some of us may need to pray and say, God, I need grace that provides, that brings the provision of God so that on whatever side I turn, I'm able to abound to every good work. There is grace that helps us conquer. Grace that helps us conquer mountains. Grace that conquers. In Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 9, the prophet Zechariah is speaking to Zerubbabel, and he's saying Zerubbabel was the governor of the Jewish people. They had just been sent back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And uh, this assignment of rebuilding the temple was such a daunting task that the uh, Jewish people just withdrew. They discontinued rebuilding the temple. And so now the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, they come, they begin to uh, encourage the people to rebuild and, re and to continue the work, to restart the work. And so the prophet Zechariah speaks and says, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And then he says, Who art thou, a great mountain before Zerubbabel? You will become a plain. And he will bring the capstone. And he will come shouting, Grace, grace to it. Shouting, Grace, grace to your mountain. What's your mountain? There is grace that can help you overcome it. And what must you do? Proclaim grace. That's what the prophet told Zechariah. You come shouting grace, grace to the mountain. Shout grace, grace to it. Because God is going to help you overcome. You who you've laid the foundation of this temple, you will also lay the capstone of the finishing stone. God's word to you. But Zechariah, you've got a mountain standing in front of you. Shout grace, grace. Grace that helps you conquer your mountains. So God's grace is available to us in different areas of life. We receive it by His Spirit and His Word. Before I close, I want to talk about another aspect of the grace of God, which is the grace that disciplines. The grace that disciplines. You know, God's a loving God. He's a very gracious God. But in His love and in His grace, He also disciplines us. In Revelation 3, verse 19... Jesus said, as many as I love, I give them lots of chocolates. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. And that word chasten is the old English word. You know, you, even when you hear that word chasten, in your mind you picture somebody chasing you. <laughs> so it's like, those I love, I chasten. So you think like God is chasing you with a spanker. That's not what it means. The word chasten simply means to bring loving correction. To lovingly correct. That's the word chasten. 